Good morning and welcome back to Buck's Kitchen. Today I am going to be making another batch of my homemade vet approved dog food. And since my last video, I've had numerous comments, suggestions, advice. It's been overwhelming and greatly appreciated. I've learned so much. It's it inspired me to go out and read and do some more research on different suggestions. And um, I'm here today to talk about those suggestions and what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do based on those suggestions. So let me start with a couple things right off the top of this list. I heard numerous people suggest black pepper with turmeric. And yes, I have discovered that black pepper contain, black pepper contains a compound called pepperine that helps to increase the rate at which turmeric is absorbed by the body. It increases the bioavailability by 2,000%. So, great suggestion. I will be adding black pepper to my turmeric. Thank you for that. Another many, many suggestions was blueberries are a great low calorie treat for dogs. They also contain antioxidants, fiber, and vitamin C and K. These nutrients support the immune system and contribute to the overall, overall health. Adding blueberries to your dog's diet is a great way to help keep them happy and healthy. So again, thank you for that. A lot of people suggested eggs. Eggs can provide an array of healthy benefits to your pup. The high level of protein in eggs is a crucial ingredient in your dog's health, helping them stay fit and strong. Additionally, the fat acids found in yolk help build and maintain your dog's cells. I have been given the egg yolks to Sable for quite a long time. When I make myself eggs in the morning, I don't need all the egg yolks. I usually leave one egg yolk per four eggs. So she gets those yolks pretty much every morning. So she gets plenty of egg yolk. I don't find a need to put it actually in this recipe. So thank you for that. Um, a lot of calcium suggestions. I do add calcium. I was adding it to the food. I have a video on eggshell calcium that I made um, from the eggs I make every morning. This little container right here is this eggshell and I have a video on this. So again, um, I was adding it to the food when I served it, but we found it constipating sable. So we've now since started adding this to the recipe and it seems to not make her constipated and she's getting the calcium additive to, to her diet, which is great. So thank you for those suggestions, but like I said, I was already doing it. And like I said, here's the blueberries that I will be adding to the recipe. Um, apples. Um, she eats apples all the time. We give her apples all the time, but they're treats. If you watch this short little video, you'll see that we chop it up and we feed her, you know, little treats. And um, she'll eat those on her bed. So she gets apples all the time. She's not a big apple fan. Sometimes she eats them. Sometimes she plays with them. So it's a hit or miss with her. Uh, but somebody suggested grating them up in the, in the food. Another great suggestion, but she does get apples. Okay, the big one, <laughs> arsenic in the rice. I've done a little bit of reading and a lot of educating myself. So, Consumer Reports has recommend babies eat no more than one serving of rice cereal per day. Consumer Reports feel compelled to suggest animal caretakers remain cautious as well. But there's independent reports that cite the amount of arsenic in pet food is expected to cause no adverse effects. What's more, some rice ingredients contain little, if any, arsenic. So what should we do? Until the FDA completes its ongoing investigation and establishes a safe upper limit for the arsenic content of rice, dog owners may wish to limit the amount of rice they feed their pets. Okay, so I'm going to continue feeding rice in this recipe. I only use a cup of it. It's not that much, and my vet also feels it's safe to give her. So we're going to continue giving her rice. I want to say, I'm not an expert. I do my own research. I consult my veterinarian and I decide what to do based on my research and my veterinarian suggestions. I believe each and every one of you should discuss the needs of your pet with your vet. You've asked, some of you have asked questions about how to handle different conditions of your dog and pets. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I suggest everyone consults their vet before changing any diets or um, amounts of food. I've had a lot of questions about how much to feed their dog. Again, I discussed it with my vet. 
Sabo, hold on a second, baby. I'll let you out in a second. So consult your vet and make the decision that's best for you and your pet. That's the only advice that I can give 100% accurate. All right, so now let's move on to the recipe. I'm not gonna go too deep into this recipe because it's pretty much the same recipe other than I'm gonna add blueberries and um, I have something else. All right, I gotta let the dog out, come on. I would like to discuss some of the questions on how I chose 25 minutes for cooking all this food. I, I guess I looked up how long to cook ground turkey in an Instapot. And they said for three to six pounds of ground turkey, 20 minutes. So I guess 25 minutes may be a little long, but we want to make sure it was cooked. I know there's a lot of debate whether it should be raw or fully cooked, but I chose 25 minutes based on um, six pounds of ground turkey. 20 minutes is what I read per the instructions of the Instant Pot. So that's what we're doing. Um, I had two cups of water. And like I said, six pounds of ground. And then for the liver, I take this um, tiny food processor and I chop it up small so it, so it equally distributes throughout the meat. All right, so now I'm gonna add the ground up beef liver right in there. I break it up a little bit. So it lays in there nicely. I put the top on, and this time I'll put 20 minutes on, and that should be plenty of time to cook that six pounds of ground turkey. When prepping the sweet potatoes, I do not peel the potatoes. I leave the skins on. Skins have a lot of nutrients. Sable doesn't seem to mind them. She eats them, so I leave them on. Another question I had in the comments. Thank you for asking. All right. All right, so the meat's all done. Whoa. My wife taught me that. Cleans the glasses really well. All right. So, something new that I've incorporated into this whole process since the last video. If you watched the last video, you saw I struggled with mixing everything, fitting everything, all the pots and the bowl and everything. It was a big, big mess. Well, I've simplified that. You have, you've all had a lot of suggestions, but I had already gone out and got myself a food safe five gallon pail. This thing has saved me a whole lot of work. All I do is throw everything in here. I'm still cooking in two batches, the meat and then the vegetables, but I put it all in here. I mix it in there. I stir it in there. And from there I put it in the Tupperware and it's easy peasy. So this, has been a game changer. So thanks for all the advice, but this is what I came up with for a solution. All right, so I put this in the sink. I've got my slotted strainer spoon here. I move this closer to the sink, and I pretty much just pull out the meat, let it strain a little bit, and then put it right in the pot, right in the bucket. Many of you have asked if I strain all the liquid after each cook, and no, I do not. I utilize all the liquid because this is mostly water and a little bit of the drippings from the meat through the cook. Um, so it's not enough to really concern myself with. I need the moisture of the liquid to cook up the rice. So I need the liquid anyway. All right. And as before, I put the potatoes on the bottom, make sure they're submerged in the water, then the rice. And like I said, I'm only using a cup of rice and then the vegetables. Now, you've also have expressed concern about cooking out the nutrients. Oh, by the way, this is the smallest bag of spinach I could find. So I only use half of this. A lot of you said, you know, spinach isn't good. Um, I only use half this bag. So 
it's not a lot of spinach, but it does provide the nutrients. And then carrots. All these vegetables will also provide moisture. So it helps with the, the cooking of the, of the potatoes and the rice. Now, there's not enough water in here, so I always add a little bit of water. I make sure everything's submerged. So it just covers, just covers the top of the vegetables. So like I was saying, the, the nutrients that are cooked out is very minimum. Um, and you were right. I don't need to cook these for as long as I was. 25 minutes is, is a little long for the vegetables. The potatoes, they should only take about 10 minutes. And the vegetables, really, I'm just softening them up so they, so they break down so it's easier for Sable to eat. That's the main reason why I'm cooking them. So they're softer and they break down um, just for ease of eating. So really, that's it. So we put the cup back on, 15 minutes. And that should be plenty of time to cook the rice, the potatoes, and not drain too much of the nutrients out of the vegetables. I find this works for me. This is just how I do it. And now we'll be back in a few minutes to mix it all up. Now the vegetables are all cooked up, and it's just a matter of scooping it out and draining the water. I don't need that much liquid, but the liquid does help keep the food moist. So I do. And now we're just scooping everything out of here. Potatoes are super soft. And when I start mixing it, everything's gonna mash up together. And it's gonna make a very good consistency that Sable enjoys eating. So, all right, so we're gonna scoop all this out. Okay, so now that it's all mixed up, I'm gonna start adding the pumpkin, as you know from the last recipe. And as I said before, I'm gonna start adding blueberries per your guys' suggestion for extra vitamins and antioxidants. Turmeric, which I've been always adding. I'm only gonna put a half a teaspoon in there. A little bit goes a long way. You don't have to put a lot. And as many of you suggested and I researched, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of pepper activates the turmeric. Now, the, the amount of pepper that's required is not nearly as much as I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna put an equal amount, a half a teaspoon. So there's your turmeric and your pepper. The calcium, this is eggshell calcium. If you wanna go see the video I made on how to make this, but it's very easy. I cook down the eggshells and I pulverize them into a powder and I'm going to put in here five teaspoons. One, two, three, four, five. And that should be plenty of calcium in this recipe. Oh, and by the way, this recipe is a single recipe. My previous video was a double batch, but I found out that since I'm making it all in the bucket, a single batch is just easier to maintain and, and make. So I didn't have a problem making a single batch. So this is just a single batch. And now we're just gonna stir it all up. And there's our consistency. This is what it looks like. I think that's a perfect, Ugh. always making a mess. Perfect consistency and Sable enjoys it. All right, so the next important step is to let this cool. You can probably see the steam coming up off the food. So I let this cool for a while before I put them into these uh, 11 cup Tupperware, but, um, Tupperware containers. So we'll push this aside, wait for that to cool. I also want to add to the end of this video, the Sable is a 10 year old Labrador. She is doing very well per my vet and her checkups. She has blown two ACLs, one on each leg. She also has arthritis. She is doing wonderful on this recipe. She's healthy. She may be a little bit overweight. She has lost a few pounds since um, our vet visits, but all in all, she's doing very well and she's living her best life. I do appreciate all the concern for her being overweight, but she is doing very, very well. And for a girl her age, She's looking good, she's feeling good, and really there's not much more we can do for her. She's, again, living her best life. And as far as the floor, a lot of you have mentioned that I don't have rugs on my floor. I have rugs all over the floor. <laughs> Sable decides to lay on the floor because it's probably cooler for her. I can't tell her where to lay, but she's got beds everywhere. She's got them in the master bed. She got them out here in the living room. We have a rug there, a rug over here, a rug over there. And there's not much I can do 
about it. Also, her nails may be a little long, but this flooring is also very echoey. So again, you guys have mentioned her nails and the floors and her arthritis and difficulty getting up. I agree with it all, but just to set the record straight, <laughs> she, she has rugs. We take good care of her. The floor is just echoey. It's just what it is. Um, and by the way, if I have a lot of echo, we're in the process of packing because we're moving. And so the house is a little bit more echoey than it normally is. But anyway, I hope that answers a lot of the questions. I also appreciate all the suggestions. After this cools for a little bit, I'll package it up in the containers. Um, we usually fill two of these. So that's around 22 cups and we freeze some and we put some in the refrigerator and she gets one cup in the morning and one cup in the evening. Also, another big question. Many of you want to know what this all cost. Here is a receipt. I went shopping this morning for this. The bill came to $38.31. And that was for the ground chicken, all the vegetables. We had the rice on hand, so I didn't have to buy rice. You're looking at about $40 for a single batch of this recipe. So $38 makes 22 cups. All right, so all of this single recipe, single serve herb. I didn't do a double batch, single batch, 22 cups, that's 11 days because we feed her one in the morning, one cup in the evening. So frankly, they don't even need to watch me do this. Two cups. Beautiful. And this is the only thing I messed up other than the, the Instapot pot. So, really, I really simplified this whole recipe from my last video. So, with the incorporation of this bucket, life is easy. All right, so there's a little bit down in here, and I'm going to let my girl Sable eat it. Just a little sample. You want some of this? This is some of the new stuff. It's got blueberries. What do you think? I think she likes it. All right. So I want to thank everybody again for all the comments and uh, attention that last video got. All the love. Um, some of the negative comments too. I mean, I think your heart was in the right place, but eh, what are you going to do? Anyway. I hope this answered a lot of the questions. I hope this video was as helpful as the last video. Um, always learning, always improving is my motto. Each time I do this, I get better at it. And if I come up with more improvements, I'll make another video. But my future videos, I think I'm going to try making some biscuits. Um, somebody asked for a cat food recipe. I need to do some research on it. We do have a cat. Uh, oh, you want to see my cat? You want to see the cat? Where's the cat? This is Milas. He is our 30 pound black cat. <laughs> I don't know, he's 13 years old though. So he's been around the longest out of all of our animals. Um, but he's a good dude. He's got his own issues. He's got some, I don't know, some problems with his wrists. So he has a hard time walking. Probably has a lot to do with the weight, but hey, what are you gonna do? So yeah, you asked for cat recipes. I'll have to look into that because we do have a cat. So again, this is Buck's Kitchen. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. You've done it before. Don't be a stranger. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.